well, this is a bit confusing. PlayStation just bought a studio that only makes mobile games. They don't do ports. They don't really do stuff on PC. They're just a cell phone developer. And it seems as if certain PlayStation fans are getting a bit nervous. But let's take a look at the official statement. What's up gamers, Dreamcast guy here. Hi, hope you're having a great day. I'm actually still setting up the new office. In fact, as you can see, I can't even find the boom arm yet to this thing. So this video is gonna probably be a little bit different, but hi, hope you're having a great morning. Please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Now starting things off, this is the PlayStation blog saying, hello, welcome Savage Game Studios. We're trying to expand our community. Now, going through this, the entire statement is being written here by Herman Holst. Herman Holst is the head of PlayStation Studios, but additionally, he seems to be the guy that's certainly in charge of a lot of these acquisitions. Whenever it is PlayStation is trying to buy somebody for millions or sometimes billions of dollars, Herman Holst is at the negotiating table. Now, what's interesting is inside the statement itself, it sounds like they've already bought the studio. This is not interest or intent. They've already bought cash. They just bought these people entirely outright. Well, inside of this, it talks about the fact that their whole idea behind this is, hey, let's get these people that have a lot of mobile gaming experience and bring them into the PlayStation family. Now, I decided to actually go to the Savage Game Studios website because honestly, I've never heard of these people before. It seems like Savage Games has not made anything yet. Uh, they were founded recently. It has a bunch of old school veterans of the mobile gaming industry which I didn't even know existed, but apparently it's a bunch of people that have helped make all sorts of classic viral games for iOS and Android and stuff like that. And for some reason, PlayStation saw this as their next major buy. Now, going back to the statement itself, it has this special thing written by the original guy, uh, the person who's the head of this studio, and then sort of this almost defensive statement by Herman Holst. Now, this studio was only founded two years ago, and what's interesting is right here, they actually answer the question that most of us are thinking, which is why join PlayStation Studios? If this is supposedly this big, massively successful game studio, if they have all this experience, maybe making fortunes of their own, why would they want to join PlayStation as another subsidiary? And it's interesting because they say, we made this deal because we believe that PlayStation Studios leadership respects our vision for how we can best operate and succeed and because they're not too afraid to take chances. All of that, plus the ability to potentially tap into the amazing catalog of PlayStation's IP and the fact that we'll benefit from their support. So that right there, I think, is the biggest flag. Uh, I don't think it's a bad thing, but certainly... It's not what I particularly like. They're essentially saying with this that it sounds like PlayStation bought them to maybe make some sort of cell phone spinoffs to games. You know, like if you're having Horizon Forbidden West on the PlayStation 5, you've got Horizon Call of the Mountain on PSVR. Maybe they can make some sort of integrated app, a, I don't know, a tiny experience that exists within the Horizon universe to help advertise. I think it's going to end up being a lot like what Nintendo is doing, where main Nintendo games only exist on the Switch, but sometimes they do stuff like Mario Run or that Mario Kart Tour where you like pay for randomized characters or even something like that Fire Emblem game. There's been rumors that Nintendo is currently working on some sort of Zelda for cell phones. Now these games, it seems like they suck a little bit. I mean, I've said this in the past. I hate mobile games. Even the best PlayStation mobile game, I'm probably never, ever, ever going to install it. But I think I'm still curious about what these games are going to turn out to be. But I want to actually scroll down here. It kind of seems like Herman Holst is almost afraid of backlash for this acquisition because he has sort of a defensive tone to the statement. As we assured you before, with our plans to bring select titles to PC, our efforts beyond console in no way diminish our commitment to the PlayStation community community, nor our passion to keep making amazing single-player narrative-driven experiences. It's been a tremendous year for PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 4, with huge releases including Forbidden West, Gran Turismo 7, MLB The Show 22, and on November 9th, the highly anticipated God of War Ragnarok. You know, it's funny as I don't see Last of Us Part 1 on here. We're also getting PlayStation VR soon. So it sounds like what they're trying to say is that 
PlayStation is just opening up the umbrella. They want to try and go in new directions, try new stuff while keeping all of their existing studios on task. One of the major things I've seen people sort of pitching around about this acquisition is that it could be some sort of cross-branding integration. Like, uh, we do know for a fact that, unfortunately, as much as I love PlayStation, they have been talking more and more about trying to spin up different games-as-a-service projects. You know, free-to-play games like Fortnite or maybe doing something like Destiny where the game is free, you can play it, but the latest expansion costs you money. I'm still nervous, even if they do something great like bring back Killzone or do some sort of like interesting online version of SOCOM with hundreds of skins that cost money. Even if that game is good, I'm still a bit nervous because... There have just been so many completely terrible games as a service projects. I mean, absolute freaking thuds. Just terrible games that have good branding, good art, good ideas, good music, and still manage to completely suck. It seems like even great studios sometimes make bad games if it's with this games as a service pinnacle placed on top of it. So... Uh, if this is an acquisition to try and help with that, because apparently Savage Games does have a lot of experience with games as a service stuff, mm, I'm still not the biggest fan of that. But what's interesting to me is that the reply to this tweet, they obviously did this out at uh, 3.23 a.m. I happened to wake up very early this morning while I was setting up all these spotlights and stuff, and I noticed that pretty universally, a lot of the replies have been pretty negative. Quick announced an acquisition so everyone will stop talking about the price hike. I mean, I don't think that's what this is, but uh, yeah, obviously that uh, PS5 price increase, not the best news. Pony's Dream, acquiring Square Enix, Capcom, and all Japanese developers. Pony's Reality, acquire mobile dev with 25 developers. Yeah, so it seems like the studio only has 25 employees. They probably scooped this up for pretty cheap. A lot of people are talking about the fact that this is just something that they're trying to buy because it's probably so low cost. Yay, mobile games. Looks like they do po mobile PC and live service AAA development. I do have to laugh at all the gifts and stuff of people just being like, okay, uh, not being negative, but uh, who? <laughs> Makes sense. Your phone will be the next PlayStation Vita. This is probably what's going to happen. I, I guess... I'm such a big fan of the PlayStation Vita, and I'm actually super obsessed with the PSP. The PSP is still one of my very favorite freaking handhelds of all time. The fact that we're never going to actually get a true, full-blown PlayStation Vita 2, we're never really going to get another handheld from PlayStation, it is a little bit disappointing, but... I guess I'm still open-minded about this. As it currently stands, let's see how this turns out. Let's see what the product actually turns into, if this is just weird, crappy, gambling on cell phones or something interesting. The fact that they actually partnered to make this controller, the Backbone PlayStation Edition, it makes me think that something extra could be going on here. This, this might be a good thing. But what do you think? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big old thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. Also, if you haven't already, go watch my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Cowabunga Collection review. I put that early this morning up on the channel. Man, that game is freaking great. But uh, now I gotta figure out if uh, this audio actually came out good. Because I don't know. I promise I'll have a boom arm next video. I'm, I'm, I'm going to find it. So one of these boxes here. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.